All right, lads, welcome to Frostpunk 2. If you haven't heard of Frostpunk before, this game is like the best city builder I've ever played, to be honest. If you haven't seen Frostpunk 1, I advise you to either go get it or go watch some videos on it. All right, preview is limited, limited in scope, no story mode available. So yeah, they pretty much just released a bare bones version of the city builder to give us a go and see what it's like. A new beginning. The end of the world changes people. It changed us. Us, the foragers, natural survivalists, adapted to the harsh frostland conditions, and the machinists. So, what I reckon here is sort of like your decentralised survivalists versus your more machinery focused people and you as the steward lead the city as overpopulation looms and resources dwindle so much like the first game you have to manage population and resources to make sure that your city survives the city builder is capped to 300 weeks so we have a time limit and as always the city must not fall Coal is running out. We need to colonize the Frostland. So in the first one, the city focus was basically around your own city. In the final DLC, they did have uh, outposts, but with Frostpunk 1, they were really hesitant to release new content for the game because they were all about the story mode. I reckon this time they're more focused on fleshing out every aspect of the game. So before we begin, let's have a little look. The UI is similar, but kind of different from the first one. Obviously the scale of the city is much larger, as this looks like a fully developed city at the end of number one. But, so, week one, day one, 8th of January 1916. So we're about 30 years in the future, I believe, uh, from the first one, because I was set in like 1880s, 1890s. So what do we got? Heat stamps. So um, res I reckon that's money. Uh, looks like taxes and then spending it on goods. Steam cores. Steam cores are really important in the first one because they were all your advanced technologies. Workforce. So 4,800 available. So it looks like your workforce consists of actual working adults and then 40% of your population will be non-workers, so children, elderly, the sick. We've got heat. So I'm guessing heat is much like in the first one, just for keeping your buildings warm. Shelter looks like... Looks like we have people not being able to get shelter. Food, we're in a surplus. Materials. So materials, I'm guessing, is going to be both wood and steel in this one. And goods. I'm guessing this is more your consumer goods. Because now your people are beyond survival. They actually want to thrive and prosper. I feel like this will be a big feature in uh, suppressing like dissidents and stuff like that. And as always, coal. We always need coal. Guard squads. All right, so now there's a bit more of an emphasis on uh, guards being a resource, not just a feature of a building. So this is very similar to the first one. We've got our minus 20 degrees. It's currently 27 degrees here in Australia, so yeah, fair little difference. Calm weather. So maybe different types of weather like storms, mega storms will come in again. And population, 8,018. So the city is far bigger, I believe. Like some of the biggest cities in Frostpunk 1 get to about 1,000 before the game starts to break. And it looks like, yeah, these days. So, oh, it talks about colder seasons. So obviously these are like, yeah, maybe your weeks. Alright, what do we got here? Cold, minor, 
So people are freezing. Hunger's absent. Squalor is absent. Disease absent. Slightly increased by cold. Crime. So crime is going to be a feature in this game. Alright, so coal is running out. Access coal deposit using frost breakers. Construct an extraction district on a coal deposit. Question is, how do we do that? Ah, so frost bake new area. Alright. So I'm guessing this is cleared land and this is like ice shelf that you need a frost breakers for. So going I'm guessing that's trade. That must be trade. Uh, wood. Yeah, mostly wood. I'm guessing that's iron down here. Oh, how do we Oh, yeah, we can move around. The city scale is just huge in comparison to the first one. But, uh, alright, we'll make our way towards the coal. I suppose that's, that's how we do it. Ah, so this costs resources. Workforce, team of workers, heavy machinery. Oh, that's cool. So, now that's doing that on arm pause. Will they go out and do that? Or did I not confirm? Do I have to fill this up? Oh, okay, so you get to fill up as much as you need. That's pretty cool. So obviously our citizens have access to much greater uh, tools than they did in the first one. Considering the first one you were just picking up wood and steel out of the cold frozen waste with your hands. Alright, let's have a look at the city now. So central district. It's got our generator. Generates. You can do overdrive. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, the time scale is way different. You could only do overdrive for about like one day before it exploded. Now you can do it for 30 weeks. Sort of, uh, I feel like Civ 6 type of like districts because you can add more buildings to this. Alright, All right, what do we got down here? Foragers. Alright, this is your two communities. I'm guessing they're going to have different ways of managing our city. And obviously it looks like a tension meter i'm guessing your whole role is to balance the two out so you can construct any buildings so you got industrial extraction food and housing doesn't look like we've got much unlocked at the moment construct districts ah so you construct districts and then i'm guessing you build the houses up there all right so housing is an issue so we'll start with that yeah, can I build that? Alright, so these are little areas to construct the district. So, what is this already? Or is this just... I think the central district takes up all this space. So we'll start... by building three. Oh, you, gotta, you have to select six. Alright. Go like that. Let's check out little animations. That was always one of my favourite parts is watching the city construct itself. I do notice a lack of people walking around. They are in the central district, but in Frostpunk 1. They used to walk out into the snow to build things, but probably will come out in the main game when it's released. Alright, looks like these guys have finished the frost baking. Oh, we're already up to week four. Wow. Old way station. Ah, uh, yep. So, that's how you get access to the frost lands, where you can send your scouts out. Oh, yep. Population growth. 
I'm guessing it grows in chunks over time rather than just random people rocking up. So now that we got this coal, we can build extraction. We got materials. We've got no materials. Oh, we got stockpile. Ah, okay, so you got demand, output, and stockpile. I'm guessing over time. Utilize them. So, has to take up a whole six areas. Oh, yeah, and they build a little highway out there. Let the time progress now. Oh, yeah, days are much faster in this than they were in Frostpunk 1. We'll speed up the fast game speed and see how this goes. Alright, our new district is built. So what's this? Housing, demolish, expand the district. So housing takes up workforce. Right. So yeah, obviously people maintenance, workers and all that. And it puts out 20 shelter. Alright, can I expand the district? Oh, yeah. We can make it much larger. Shelter from the cold, good. We skewed a new source of coal for the generator. Now we need shelter. Without it, people still freeze to death, regardless how hot the generator runs. The closer the generator or other shelter, the better. We cannot afford to lose more heat than we have to. Alright, so I'm guessing. You want to build your districts as compact as possible. Sure. Machines and forage have different opinions on how to improve the city further. We need a place to develop ideas for the future. Expand a housing district to provide more space for advanced buildings and build a research institute. Alright, I think I already did that when I expanded this. Alright, is this... Should we extract more coal than we currently need to provide adequate heat to the city? Such so we began to stockpile the surplus. At the moment, we have more ample storage space. Basically, they're just telling you you got to build stockpiles if you create too much resources. Alright, now that our city district is expanded we can build a building. Ah, so you build districts and then in the districts you can build buildings. And, well, let's put a research institute in here. Got 528 weeks of coal left. Sounds pretty good. Alright, another pop-up. Different ideas, communities. A small crowd gathers outside of the new research institute, arguing how to exploit the last coal veins. The machinists want us to lean on machine-powered mining, but the foragers would ask to pursue more fugal solutions. They would never display such discord in the captain's heyday. You have to choose who to entrust with developing their idea. Show me your options. So... I'd seen that this idea tree is sort of like a tech tree, but more on a, you're leaning upon one side of your factions rather than just pure tech. So we've got choices and obviously as we get further down the line, you get more choices. So I think they've folded technology and the laws books into one. So let's have a look at our coal mines. How can we mine more coal? Forages, dust coal mine. Mine operation where residual coal dust is sucked up and compressed into briquettes to make maximum use of the resources. Workforce requirement, coal output, disease is slightly increased. Material demand. Okay, so they want to utilize every single little piece of resource, and uh, but working with coal dust is kind of dangerous and definitely would increase disease. Whereas the machinists, they want to grind in coal mine. Requires 
Grinding machines to churn through coal seems quickly leaving heaps of slag behind. Okay, so they increase coal output, but squalor is increased. So it's kind of like we have to choose which one we like. And looks like the factions control pretty much 50-50 of the city. And over time, the more ideas you give them, I think the better they are at developing their faction power. And obviously they'll ask for more and more over time. So, I think we'll go with foragers. So, now the Research Institute is researching and we just progress through time. Coal stockpiling. Goods are in limited supply. Research is finished. So now. Oh, okay. So it's not a one or another, you can develop both. Let's have a look. I like this little golden arch that leaves from your survival center. So what about economy? Oh yeah. Famine pretend, prevention. Not available in preview. So housing block. So they want to provide shelter to large number of citizens and limited amount of space. These look exactly the same. I think that's uh, not been worked on. Society. I reckon society is going to have where you start to. Oh, uh, yep, weapons. I feel like this path is where your authoritarianness comes out. But let's have a look at hospitals. Where should we treat people in need of extensive medical care? Foragers, hospital, hospital. All right, so looks like only the survival aspect has been developed, yeah. But that's what you get when you play a beta. Alright, so let's continue with our mission. We will build the dust coal mine. Alright, so we need to give the people the right to a council. First council session. People cheer as the gates of the council open. Feels like a piece of the world lost to the frost has been regained. So this is the people bringing back democracy. People have hopeful to have their voices heard. While the machinists have forwarded to clash about our survival strategy, neither has a firm stance on economic or social issues. However, many in their ranks do, though they keep to the shadows for now. To pass any law in the council, you will need the majority of the delegates to support it. Oh, this looks cool. So yeah, in number one, you were a bit more of an authoritarian leader because it was humanity survival at stake. But obviously the city is now much larger and people want a say in how the city should be run. People of the city have sent 100 delegates to represent them. Your role is sure to propose laws that will be put to a vote. However, communities have different outlook on many things. You may have to negotiate or pressure them to get enough support. This is cool. Like you know, in real life, interest groups, they have demands 
and different ideas on how to run things. So I can see that you might be having to give up certain aspects of your play style to gain others. Right, let's propose a law. Oh, yeah. So, food additives. Everyone will remember this one from number one. Have we got sawdust available? Ah, forage additives. Natural forage ingredients may be added to food. We will train people to forage for these in the frostland. Chemical additives. The city will approve chemical additives with tested and tolerable risk levels. So, yeah. Food output per capita is slightly increased. Food production efficiency is significantly increased. Diseases are mildly increased. So, there are definitely two different ways of going about increasing food supply. I feel like the foragers are going to be like small efficiency gains everywhere to get past the survival needs, whereas the machinists will be like big efficiency gains, but they come with a lot more risk. Well, let's have a look what else we got. Goods. There's no defined standards on how goods are produced. In order to become scarcity, we will organize our production lines to increase goods production efficiency, supported by machinists. Durable goods. In order to make best use of scarce resources, we'll focus on producing sturdy and easily repairable goods. So, yeah, look, this steps into the foragers wanting to be all about survival and resilience, whereas the machinists, they believe the future is through mass production and through, you know, industrial uh, techniques. So, obviously, you've got the people and then the group who supports it. And it's a small step towards adaptation, small step towards progress. So, these are probably the ideologies of progress versus adaptation. What else have we got? Economy. Oh, yep. Welfare, citizenship, labor. Yeah, right. Ah, contagion. Infection badge. Contagious people will require to wear a specific badge. <laughs> And then quarantine. We all remember quarantine. How much fun was that? But I don't think we had too many infectious badges. So yeah, it looks like uh, some really interesting laws all through here. What about society? Care, funerals, childhood. Ah, we need to get them back into the, back into the coal mines. It's nothing better than the old 14-hour workday in the coal mine for children. All children must work alongside their fellows so that they learn their trade and continue family tradition. Ah, so this must be another ideology of tradition. So probably the more extreme laws from Frostpunk 1 is would be your traditions. And then reason. So I'm guessing reason is the, like the future being established. Entry schools, research speed, percentage of active workers slowly increase. This would be good for squeezing as much as out, out of your population as you can get. What about funerals? Ceremonial funerals. Harvesting. Ah, yes. Disease is slightly increased. Decreased. Research speed is slightly increased. So... Yeah, no rights for the dead. Alright, I think I'll start with something this simple. We'll go... We'll go... Community outsiders. Allow productive outsiders. So there's definitely lots of different ideologies in this. I think balancing them is going to be your biggest concern. Where was the housing one? Oh, housing distribution is locked. We'll go basic necessities. Paid essentials to foster responsibility and reward work. Citizens will be charged a small fee in exchange for essentials. Free essentials. Based on availability, the city will ensure that all citizens are provided with what they need to survive for free. Ooh. This is screaming a capitalist run. Oh, 
We'll do food additives. Food additives was the original one. I think we'll go forages this run, as we've already done extraction. So the law is proposed. Voting in 10 weeks. So uh, you can vote or negotiate. So you'd probably give it up to the people. Oh, yeah. So you could use your sway to pressure people. But then they would probably lower their trust of you. So for against no six. We'll, we'll vote. Voting on additives. The proposed law has been approved. All right, sweet. The people agree with me. The new law has been agreed on. Good, there are challenges ahead. Proving coal extraction is a success, but the vein will only last so long. We need to explore the frost zone for a permanent source of fuel. That's the first step in our colonization effort. If we don't take it, the city will have no future at all. This concludes onboarding tasks to preview. Remember, you can always consult the tutorial. The city must not fall. Alright. Looks like we're up on a big mountain. Alright, so we got to make our way to a way station to get the next part. Establish a food colony, establish a fuel colony, establish a materials colony. Alright, let's uh, break some more land. Which one looks closer? This one looks closest. Let's can we just beeline towards it. Yeah, we can. Not use up scarce resources too quickly. So probably your people will start speaking to you, letting you know how they feel. That was uh, in number one. They'd always pop up at the bottom of your screen, letting you know how they felt about whatever's going on. Oh, nice. She's got a giant penis towards the way station. Alright. Is this clear the way? Alright, now that that's done, let's do... Is it districts? Logistics district. Fill up this whole area. Oh, we got an event. So this is an event that people pop up and give you an idea of how their city's going. Cindy's part went on it. Cindy's pa went and got her a governess. Like she's gonna be a duchess or something. Not on our watch. We roughed up that little bitch, all right. Fergus and the boys will learn this too if they try and wife us again tonight. We'll pull out the razors and say we'll cut it out. Their eyes. It will be good fun. But what? But what we's want is a proper rumble. Short blades only. Come on, who wants to play? The lack of law regulating childhood is causing tension to rise through throughout the city. I know survival makes people grow up quicker, but Jesus, 12-year-olds slitting each other with razors is a bit rough. Alright, thank you, Sue Miller. Alright, logistics district is ready and the Frostland team stand by for your orders. Frostland exploration is now available. Alright. Cool. What's this? Just around the river bend. For the Petra fired river up through the frost and spot a sharp bend north of here. It could be an indicator of underground resource like oil or gas. Let's see. Supposedly oil and gas, I suppose, will be resources that we also require. Initial stockpiles of materials are run out. Our current output will satisfy demand, but problems will mount over time. We must expand our districts or establish new ones to provide more supply. Otherwise, the city and us will suffer. Right, we need more materials. Oh yeah, you can see that we've chewed through them all. Can put it on normal speed. Oh, what's wrong? Ah, so you can you can uh, end democracy. I'm guessing through this little tree. 
That'd be nice to know in the future. What's this event? Rex Dale, 45, entrepreneur, turning from the city approach trail. A profitable day. First couple were all rags and bones and useless. Jeez, I'm. I know I sound British, but being Aussie, it's still very hard to read this. Law re regulating outsiders, decreasing population growth. All right. I'm guessing people want me to do more laws. Well, we might do that now. Society. Outsiders. Alright. I think. Tell like 20 others are for it. We allow productive outsiders. Only those who help will be allowed in. Alright. I think uh, we'll, go, we'll allow people to vote again. The delegates have spoken. Excellent. The law takes effect. Awesome. Is there a cooldown on laws? Council and recess for 10 weeks. Oh, here you can get a better view of the foragers. I believe adaptation is key and growing reliant on technical gimmicks invites disaster. Machines tend to break down as soon as conditions deteriorate. Human spirit is a lot more enduring. That's fair. That's fair. Definitely good for survival. The machinist. As people are descendants of the groups that built the initial cities and maintained their machinery, they face the great frost huddled around the generator and believe this technological marvel is why they are alive at all today. This belief shapes them. When there is a problem, they would seek a way to solve it through automation, or devising machines to do the work, or exploit available resources to ensure good safety margins. To them, technological progress is the only way to ensure survival, and maybe even prosperity. So both sides have, like, reasonable ways of approaching it and I'm guessing balancing the two is the only way we're going to get through all this so we need more materials we'll, uh, break some of this get access Let's see if we can do this in a better way there we go Let game pass some days. Right, now that we've got that available, let's construct a new district. It's good that they automatically build the roads between them, otherwise I feel like I'd be building too many roads. Alright. The temperature has dropped. Our population has grown. City grows. Population growth. Stuart, a new count has revealed significant growth in our population in the recent weeks. Some are true to the rise of influx of settlers from Frostland. Others to births that numbering deaths. Whatever the cause, we have adjusted our calculations so the city's needs to reflect the new numbers. Awesome. More workers. Full on coal. We're running out of goods, materials we're not too good for, food is becoming scarce, shelter it's alright and heat's alright. Alright, let's see if I can, what are our scouts up to? Have they made it? There? Ah, oh, I didn't even launch an expedition, wow. Time to chart, 18 weeks. Safe territory, fast chart, few frostland teams required. So I feel like uh, maybe there might even be a bit of fighting in this one. It's considered safe territory. Right. Can I launch multiple expeditions? Not enough resources. Not enough resources. How many? Oh yep, frostland teams, 10. Uh, let's go back to the city. 
All right, I think it's time to deal with some of our issues. Food, everyone's hungry, people are cold, people are sick, and crime, notable. Right, how's this going? Wood remaining. Any buildings we can build? No. Well, we should get a food district next. So this is a food source. This is builds while we look. Food remaining, total output 60. We need more food. What's this event? Feral children, no common rules. Five children are dead and dozens lay wounded after two large youth gangs met for what they called a rumble. Most of the children are armed with knives. The fighting escalated to a full scale battle. His parents of the deceased mourn. Many insist these children should not be left unattended. Jesus. All right. Let's uh. Let's fix this. Oh, five children. Let's go to our laws research. We'll research. Some more food. My waste drum. House. Dutch size hot houses where organic waste ferments in large vats, fertilizing revolving shelves of crops. So that disease and more heat, a lot more heat, but squalor and chemical. Well, we're going to go with the foragers. Let's develop that idea. And then to the council. Let's fix our childhood. Let's get, let's get more research speed. Let's try out negotiating, see what the people want. We'll negotiate with the machinists. They will split law during the next voting, my terms, their terms. Right. So yeah, they've got options for what they want, even up to destroying buildings that you've already built. Interesting. Policies. We'll do a community action. Relations improve with machinists. Accept. And now we can vote. So we already had the majority because of the negotiations. Alright, that's good. So now can we build? No, we're still researching. Didn't mean to press that. I think at this point we just kind of let time go by. Child law has been regulated. You keep the promise and evade an unnecessary chaos in the city. Trust arises. 30 more people sick and unable to work in the city. Alright. Oh, jeez. Everything's getting worse. What else do you guys want? Ice bloods formed in support of forage additives and allow productive outsiders. So I think ice bloods are like the extremist version of the foragers.
Yeah. As far as just 82 people were recently murdered by violent criminals in the city. Holy. Hunger becoming a pressing concern. You must find a practical solution to address the growing food shortage and ensure our people are fed. Yeah, improving methods of growing food in the city or look for more sources of it. Exploring new territories can enhance our possibilities in that matter. Hunger has risen. Alright, I need to get more food. Ice bloods wanted. So yeah. Both sides, the machinists and the foragers, must have their more extremist faction. Have we researched hothouses? Not yet. Let's put another war out. Let's go. Let's fix our food. We'll continue. No, we've already done that. What law should we pass next? Go survival. Economy. Let's try and get rid of disease by quarantining. And we'll just vote for that. The nose have it. Oh, we're rejected. Let's see what that does. So we go back. Council recess. Oh, you can see your individual councillors. Oh, yep. Yeah. And oh, they light up the portion. You can see the extremists are only a minority. It's hard and small to recruit from the most resilient and capable individuals in the city. This is their manifest. So, yeah, they definitely are the more extreme version of foragers. We're working on our food. Is that done? Four days. Let's go. All right. Let's build that. I think we'll try and fix housing as well. Canyon's been explored. Let's have a look out. Alright. So there's a small little coal mine out here that we can connect to build a trail or a railway. Oh, there's gonna be trains. I love trains. Connect a trail. How do I connect this? Can't go that way. Go to that. Oh yeah, now you can see a little effect on the uh, world map. Let's send a coal mining team out. Ah, oh, so this is an event for the laws that I've passed. We've only allowed the child to come in. And here we could relax the law. So we could let their closest relatives in as well, or we can keep it strict. This would increase our relations with the ice bloods. Let's, we're not cruel. Let's keep doing this one. Happy worker is an efficient worker. 
Alright, our coal mine is built. So we get 200 coal per whatever time scale it is, month or year. Nothing lost. Why is it begin coring people who forage food overs in the forest? Right, so, oh, cool, that's cool. The bio-waste drums and the food forage from the foragers works off of each other. And the foragers bring more excess material. Oh, that's cool. Combination laws and research. So, you could probably stack some really decent research. Right. We've sorted out food. All right. Housing, and we just need to expand this. There we go. Alright, we're getting more and more absent workers because they're sick. So, how do we fix that? Research. Society, hospitals. Let's... Ah, so the ice block. Oh, so foragers and machinists both have the same idea on this. But ice bloods are the ones that are different. Ah, so this is. So the hospital not only helps them get better, but also. Helps increase population growth. But it requires a lot more heat. Well, how's it looking for heat? The generator just keeps putting out heat. Oh, so heat is just coal. Oh, we've got plenty. Let's go hospitals. And we'll do some laws. Community service, voluntary and unfocused community effort does not yield any student gains for the city. Everyone must aid expeditions by helping them prepare for their journeys. Ah. So you can ask your people to do minor work outside of their jobs. I feel like that's more of like a small efficiency boost. Oh yeah, this infection badge was refused last time. Doesn't seem to have any effect. I can just redo it. We'll, we'll do quarantine. We'll just build more houses. This time we're going to negotiate. Won't negotiate, has active promise. Forage is open to negotiate. And they won't negotiate because it's against their worldview, which makes sense. Like, they're the extremists. They're not going to be happy to do this. Foragers, vote for, please. So I'm guessing the only reason you get them to vote against is if your factions force you to open up a vote. Um, might do a survival research. Worker shifts, weather adjusted shifts. To protect worker health, workplace must adapt working hours to the weather conditions. Heat demand is slightly decreases. So reducing productivity, but making work safer. And I think that's a good idea. So let's take this to a vote. We just got the required amount. Oh, no. The city supports it. So we'll start off by building one more housing district. And as you see, enclosing your city 
with these districts and making them next to each other makes your heat usage go down. So you want to make a really dense city. Alright. Shelter. Oh, still unfulfilled. Let's just add a little bit more. Here, here, and here. Another event. Ah, so this person doesn't like the fact that we allowed the families of productive people in and they're getting in the way. And what does this person want? Ah, so Sue, our little fighting kid has decided that reading is a lot more fun than uh, stabbing each other. Who would have thought? Find a permanent source of fuel outside the city. Alright. So I thought the coal would be fuel, but I'm guessing not. Need more Frostland teams. How do I get more of these? Ah, more output. More districts. I'll expand this. It's built me five extra teams. 110 people were murdered. Holy crap. Alright. Let's let's sort out this murder. This is because of the good scarcity. Build an industrial district. This is going to cause squalor. Ah, uh, so you can build shared workforce. Let's, yeah, build it out here. Break some frost as well. I'll turn this whole region into like a big industrial area. Machinists are refused, you break their word. Use fun projects on machinists. Okay, I didn't know how to do that. It's, it's my bad. Oh, there we go. Fun projects. Request funds. Ah, a few people. Well, we will let them choose the next law. City development effort. Everyone must support the extraction work in an effort to gain. People are divided. We'll uh, take this to a vote. The votes are in. The measure passes. Lack of spare labour in the sea. We're all stretched in. Maybe we'll seek laws or transport structures that will help us get more done. Otherwise, we may have to prioritise what work gets done, which districts stay open, and which will close down. Oh, so we're running out of workers. And we've got our new recovery hospital. there. So these guys put an output of 20 goods. Oh, and we're spending our coal. So we need more coal. The materials. Let's see if we can expand. No. You can only expand it on to materials themselves. Oh, what? research have we got? Efficiency, fuel. Let's go to sawmills. What have we got here? Untreated wood. Mechanized sawmill. 
untreated wood. So they've got the same idea. I'm going to go with machinists this time because we just, we don't have the workforce and we do need the materials. Let's develop that idea. And what's going on down here? An old enemy. She was only made at a time we have unusually long streak of wild weather. But now meteorologists are clear. That's a familiar drop in the air pressure. A whiteout is coming. Alright, so we're going to get another great storm. Frightened by the growing presence of ice floods. The technocrats have formed. Alright. A new voice, technocrats. Tech-minded and calculating people recruiting those who have value a cold, rational argument. They manifest progress, equality, and reason. Seek past mass, produce goods, accept all outsiders, house funerals. So the technocrats are extreme progressives and actually fully about equality, but in like a cold, calculating way. There's been a lot of talk, especially on... Uh, subreddits about what each faction represents so yeah we now have our two moderates and two extremists I'm guessing in the full game you're going to have like all of the ideologies present at once which would be extremely interesting to watch them fight each other so crime and squalor are still minor but we need to fix so I think we'll start by breaking the frost out here. And we'll also go for the logistics hubs. So if we go like this. This frost breaking is sort of like how you'd create roads in the previous frost punk. Right. Do that again. Go for the materials first. Oh, we don't have enough workforce. All right, we need more people. Can we build a housing district? We don't have enough people. We don't have enough money. All right. This is looking rough. Program war, mandatory school. Stuart, people are increasingly arguing over the curriculum taught in schools. So much you can reduce theoretical knowledge and provide more survival training. Filling these kids' heads with numbers and useless junk. Complain about angry trapper. We ought to take them out on field trips. Okay, so now you get a chance to edit an already established law. Our children should have basic knowledge in both survival and science. That just pisses off everyone. Concentrate on science. Manage school. Increase the research speed even more. Relations improve with machinists and technocrats. Manage school. No longer increase the research speed, but provides food instead. Oh, well, I think we're going to cons concentrate on science. We've got enough food for now. That makes these guys much happier. Alright, we need to fix our economy. Doesn't seem to be any laws that will help me fix my people shortage, so I think we will just Allow some time to pass. Alright, heat demand is decreased. It's now a warmer season. Mechanized sawmill, new building proposed by the machinist. Oh, good, that's our 
expanded sawmill. And then we got ironworks, woodworks, goods factories. Let's see what we can do about these worker shifts. Right, everyone seems to have their viewpoint. Weather adjustment shifts. That's the resource production efficiently slightly decreased. Machine adjusted shifts to put less pressure on workers' workplaces. Keep machines powered around the clock and adjust the working hours accordingly. Well adjusted, well adjusted machine. I think we're going to go with the machinist because we just don't have the population. Ninety years old, ninety summers. What winters more like? The lack of law re regulating funerals. All right, you know what? I'll give this guy a funeral. Except his funeral is going to be us taking his body parts. I'm going to pressure delegates. Ah, okay, so I'll take a hit from my trust but we get a lot of people accepting what we want. The delegates have spoken. The law takes effect. All right. just got a whole bunch of new workforce so we can now expand our production build this extraction district as well we're gonna break out to the frost over here promise to forage is broken the forage is nose ah yeah I was meant to do that for them. Whoops. Let's get this new logistics district. I guess I haven't actually... Can I just do the single... Please? Yeah, I can. Delegate session. A vote on machine adjusted shifts will occur. Didn't we already do that? Doing it again, apparently. The eyes have it. Sweet. God, there's so much happening at once. Last blood to begin protesting. I'm just gonna ignore you for now. Oh. So they're upset at me, so they've stopped work. So I need the guards. Technocrat rallies build support. Steward the Technocrats beside gathering for periodic rallies supporting your rule. Well, I do like people that support my rule. They've got the broadcasting system to carry their message. They know how to tally up all the activities in a ledger and <laughs> identify inefficiencies. Sounds like these people live by Excel spreadsheets, and I'm all about that. Let's do more equality. Looks like they can seize parts of your city as well, these uh, factions, so I feel like you're going to build out your big city and then you're going to have little civil wars inside yourself in the uh, full game. Escape from work tirelessly to care for the patients. Therefore, it seems to be greatly appreciated since many patients do not wish to leave their beds, claiming they are still sick and need more time to recover. They are not sick anymore. We know it's best, but the way things work, we have to take good care of them until they feel like they can go back to work. So one of the nurses, people misuse their stay at the hospital trying to get as much leave as they can. What should be done? Ignore it. 
Alright, less disease because people get to stay the whole time. Let's uh tighten tighten our grasp on the hospital. Finally, I can build my logistics district. Where are we going for money? We don't make much money. We find a way to get more money out. Filtration towns. So many options to choose from. I don't even know what to go down. What's our biggest issues? Housing and goods. Oh, so is this the whiteout that they were talking about? Nah, it can't be. It's more protests. I see, I see, I see. You know what? You guys can keep protesting. I'm going to go hang out with the uh, scouts. See what they're up to. Got 15 scouts. Can I turn this off? And I get my scouts back. Cool. Well, let's send them out here. Possible findings. Food. Possible findings. Forest land dwellers. Let's go check this out. 31 weeks to get there. Jesus. How long does it take you to get there? Ah, oh, so they get there and then they spend weeks exploring. Alright. Has the city collapsed yet? Alright. I need you guys to get back to work. How can I... District is not working. Protest. Negotiate to end the protest. Mm, I don't have enough guards to send in, so we'll negotiate. If you meet the demands, they will end the protest in the food district. Repel. See about repelling this law. I don't repel. Propose. Is there a way to... I suppose I just propose the next law. Which I'm going to force through. And we'll vote. 69. Nice. The proposed law has been approved. Wait, the demands have been really no longer support you and that's rallying your favor if you improve relations they might get. so I've pissed off everyone at this point people are talking about what's happening in the city that was a pretty cool John Barry, Welder. Technocrats have grown more radical because the steward negotiated with their opponents. So, looks like people get more radical as you screw up, pretty much. And I'm tolerated. I'm not even liked. God. Where's the scouts? The scouts never complain. In the first one, the scouts were like the biggest chads, being able to spend all of the entirety of the game out in the snowlands with no problems. I'm gonna. What am I gonna do now? Let's have a look at the research. Let's have a look at economy. Housing block. That's. Everyone has the same law. Dense housing? Subsidized housing block. No. Dense housing. It's going to be the way of the future. And laws. Let's go... Five more. Make 
nice sawmill that we didn't do before. Got the workforce, so let's let's build it. Oh look. That's cool. Ah, so here comes a storm. Oh, the air raid siren, that sounds awesome. Oh god, people are freezing. Heat. We could remove heat from workplaces, but that will make them less effective. On the other hand, we cut heat to people's dwellings, it will endanger the most fragile. Prioritize housing. We've got to save everyone. Oh god. Expedition group has been caught out in the whiteout. What does that mean? Are you dead? Where's my expedition gone? Got an old steam ledge. Ooh. Take the coal, come back for it later. And derelict settlement. We came across a group of machinists attempting to settle in the frostland. It'll be a good addition to the workforce, but they not. Well, we just lost a thousand people, so uh, let's let's get them back. Oh god, things are not looking good here. Everyone's dying. Yep, I understand. It's gold. People no longer trust you. It doesn't prove the council demand a vote of confidence. Disputing your leadership. If you fail that vote, it'd be the end of your rule. Oh no. Right, let's put the generator on overdrive. Will that help? Seems to. Up a little bit. Oh, it's because we got no coal available. Oh, we definitely need more coal. Expand this district. We were not ready for this whiteout. Expedition teams must hurry. Alright, the city hates me. I'm failing everything. Frostland Dillers. Cause. What's that? I want to find the fuel. Oh, so the whiteout's moving across this region. Oh, frozen desert. Good. Alright. Let's just keep sending our expedition out that way. Good enough materials, so let's expand the industrial district. Let's try and make goods more available for our people. We're going to do this through goods factory. We'll try and 
make the foragers happier with us. Economy, basic necessities. We're going to do paid essentials. Ooh. Passed it. Awesome. The measure passes. Looming cold. Right. So everyone's upset that it's cold. Better turn this off overdrive before we blow the city up. How can I increase the heat? Anything in here? No. It's gonna have to be our research. Let's just call output, but where's the heat? Generate upgrade. Oh, we can't upgrade the generator in this? Oh, it looks like I'm just going to freeze to death. Waste heat conversion. Let's work on improving the trust in our self Let's develop this idea. Who's our largest faction? Forages, let's make a promise to them. And research heat recycling in 40 weeks. I'm gonna make a On some projects. Got plenty of money now. Let's fund projects for everyone. So one of these guys have three different art oh, you can request stuff. Make promise. Alright. Oh, you can infiltrate. Definitely get the full police state going. More protests. Ignore that for now. Alright. Now I'm losing both my industrial and my food. Things are not looking good. Lost your people's trust. Your people revile you and demand you leave office in the city. You have one last chance to save yourself, however. A few kind hard souls who can see others put your stewardship up for a vote. If you win this vote, the people's trust will be restored. If you lose, your days are over. You may call it yourself once. If not, the delegates will hold a vote without you. We're going to hold this vote and see what the people think about me. Time out. confidence oh no one really likes me let's see if I can negotiate technocrats will you vote for me if I promote you guys let's do it let's see <coughs> all right I've been exiled when they came for you, your guards looked the other way. 
forcefully removed from the office by an angry mob, you have been sentenced to exile to the Frostland. You are not to ever return to the city under penalty of death. Some of your supporters follow you out into the snow, turning back one by one until you're left alone. Game over. Frostpunk, as always, a cruel, cruel game. Alright guys, that was first look of uh, Frostpunk 2 Beta. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and I'm really keen for the full game to come out.